Quad leaders meeting scheduled to take place in Sydney next week has been cancelled. US President Biden suddenly scrapped his trip to Australia but has offered Prime Minister Albanese a state visit to Washington later in the year. Negotiations took place between the Australian United States, Japanese and Indian governments overnight following Joe Biden's decision to not attend Australia or Papua New Guinea following the G7 leaders meeting scheduled for Hiroshima. The reason that Joe Biden is not attending is because there are negotiations ongoing in the United States in regards to the debt ceiling. So he apologised to Anthony Albanese and said that he would postpone his trip here to Australian Parliament where he was due to give an address in Canberra and as well that quad leaders meeting to take place at the Sydney Opera House in Sydney. That has now been cancelled. The quad leaders meeting uh, will not be going ahead in Sydney next week. Uh, we, though, will be uh, having that discussion between quad leaders in Japan. I'm cutting my trip short. I'm postponing the Australia portion of the trip and my stop in Papua New Guinea. And I spoke today with Prime Minister Albanese uh, of Australia and a short time ago and let him know what was going on. The White House has confirmed that Joe Biden offered a state visit to Anthony Albanese, which will be later this year. A state visit has taken place in the past. This will be the first invitation for a state visit from Joe Biden to Anthony Albanese. President Biden, though, indicated uh, that he was uh, very much uh, looking forward to coming down at a future date uh, when it can be arranged. And I will visit uh, the United States uh, for a state visit uh, later this year. As for the Quad, the Prime Minister insists that all four leaders will meet on the sidelines of the G7 to ensure that the outcomes and also aims that were set down for that meeting in Sydney are discussed. Joining me now is James Brown. He's one of the council members at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. James, thank you for your time, as always. These things happen, I guess, when you're dealing with the United States, but it's not ideal, given the Prime Minister and, and others were very keen to get the Quad front and centre next week. Look, these things do happen. Presidents have to change their schedule, but I think there's two things that are important here. Firstly, this debt ceiling crisis was predictable. These things come around like clockwork. They've happened many times before. So for our Prime Minister to be standing up last night, still declaring that President Biden would visit and then to have that decision overturned uh, by the time we woke up this morning is embarrassing. It's short notice. The US should have done a better job of it than this. I think the other thing that's important here is President Biden chose not to send Vice President Harris when Bill Clinton had to cancel his trip to the APEC summit back in the 90s. He was able to send yeah. his Vice President along. I think there's no trust here that Vice President Harris could fill the role and, and do the job. Yeah, James, you make a good point that the, the notice was just appalling. I mean, we saw pictures there of Marine One, the President's chopper already here for for the, uh, the, the events of next week. So they were, were proceeding on that basis as well, it seems, up to the last minute, just to, only to, to pull the rug. It's not a great look. Look, there would have been enormous political capital for Prime Minister Albanese next week from having the US President doing a speech to Parliament. Uh, enormous political capital too, and importance, I think, for the Prime Minister up in PNG, who effectively declared a national holiday for the first arrival of a of a US president ever, yeah. um, now that's not happening. And that will open the door for critics, including China, to make the point that the US isn't committed to the region, which is exactly the wrong signal. Uh, that's exactly what the Quad is designed to prevent against. Well, and the, the, within the Quad, you've got the AUKUS arrangement as well, uh, I guess a parallel to that, where some observers will, will look at it and say, well, we've just committed to this huge thing, uh, massive expenditure, big tie-in once again with the US, and he can't even make the time to get here. Yeah, it's look, it's not good at all. And, you know, age is not a factor. When you and I saw John McCain back in 2017, he was 80 years old. He flew down here commercial, flew off the next day commercial. He didn't have Air Force One at his disposal. 
Putting the quad in the sidelines of the G7 in Japan downgrades the quad. The quad is a very important, you know, collective uh, arrangements uh, to deter Chinese adventurism, to reinforce the mutual interests and values of the four largest democracies in this region. Um, having it as an afterthought in Japan is problematic. There's also a whole lot of other bilateral agreements that would have been banked up to be announced as part of President Biden's visit that just won't happen now. Perhaps they'll happen in the state visit to Washington later in the year by our Prime Minister. Perhaps they won't. Yeah. But this will mm -hmm. throw an enormous amount of bilateral work aside as well for a number of months. In, indeed. And when, when I spoke about the critics of, of AUKUS, so you don't have to look too far from a, a Labor uh, government perspective to find them, do you? With... Uh, no less than their, one of their heroes in Paul Keating, among others within the Labor fraternity. So I guess for the Prime Minister, for Richard Marles, for Penny Wong, who've, who've pushed foreign policy and strategic policy very much in under the US umbrella, uh, they would have just liked this to have gone a bit smoother. And it seems that the government did wait until very late to try and confirm it. That was embargoed till last night, only for it to all fall over. So if you're in Beijing, the People's uh, Republican... Uh, the, sorry, I should say the PRC, the, uh, um, the Communist Party, they would be delighted with what they're saying. And we've seen uh, Bob Carr today making comments about how this shows that the US isn't really committed to the region. Uh, we know that there are those voices here in Australia and certainly in Beijing that will exploit this to really try and reinforce the message that the US just won't show up when push comes to shove. And that's what's so disappointing about the cancellation of this visit by President Biden's team. You're right, it's been messy. It will take a lot of effort to repair the damage. Uh, and it's disappointing that the president couldn't still make, meet his commitment, leaving the vice president behind to manage those debt ceiling negotiations or leaving that to the rest of his team. Yeah, exactly. James Brown, great to see you as always. A council member at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. We'll talk to you soon.